What up, y'all? This is the Kiss My Ace podcast, talking all things music, sports, and culture. And I'm your favorite girl, Alicia West, or better known as Ace. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. For this episode, I think it's really special to me. But the first question that I wanted to start off was that good old chicken and the egg question. <laughs> um, what came first for you guys? Working, Wanting to work in sports or wanting to work in broadcasting? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. I think wanting to work in sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that. Um, I mean, as mentioned, I like that's just something that I've always done. My family's always been around it, so I just mm-hmm. wanted to continue that. And um, I don't know. I think I've realized, like, hey, you have a voice and a chance in, to share your opinion and your passion through telling stories. Mm-hmm. A lot later, when I was in high school and like English classes and stuff, and I was like, hey, this could be like a great fusion. So I think it was the sports first, and then after realizing that I can tell stories through journalism. Mm-hmm. What about you, Megan? Probably the same, um, but for me it wasn't It wasn't high school when I realized it. It was actually my AD when I was at Humber in college who decided that me not wanting to shut up talking um, <laughs> was probably a good avenue to go into radio instead of interior design like you flirted with. <laughs> for um, for so, a hot second. <laughs> yeah, so for me it was just like playing collegiate basketball you kind of have that idea that you want to go mm-hmm. playing somewhere else so at, at some point I realized like WNBA wasn't going to happen overseas wasn't going to happen I just I wasn't at the point where I could have done that and I wanted to still be within sports so I thought maybe you know being fitness trainer personal mm-hmm. trainer strength and conditioning coach and then that wasn't really working for me mm-hmm. and then I just it came down to radio or interior design and it was the best decision to like let someone else make it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we all have those decisions sometimes yeah. in our lives. So um, you went to school for broadcasting right off the bat? Well, No, I first decided. I did. First I actually did a fitness and health program because oh, okay. I wanted to do like the strength and conditioning um, and playing fitness was a big part of just staying mm-hmm. in shape. So I thought that was it and then after the first year of it I just realized it wasn't for me and it came down to those two programs. Mm-hmm. What about you, Kelly? Did you ever play sports? Uh, yeah, all through like high school, I was on my Don Mills collegiate basketball team and mm-hmm. volleyball team. But I wasn't as talented. I didn't grow anymore. I wasn't taller, so <laughs> I like you know you just kind of like no, you know you look in like, the mirror, oh. you're just like you know the pro life just ain't for you. I think you're better <laughs> watching than playing. Like and you, yeah. Right. I think, it, I think it's just time that I need to like let go of this dream. Yeah, right? Like and um I mean the thing is is like I never ever I don't think I've ever had that dream to like play pro. Mm-hmm. I think it was just more so like I just want to be in in the field like yeah. advertising, marketing, whatever how whatever I could do to just sort of be in it. I've never like had that dream to be like, "Oh, I want to I want to be on the court or anything." I just mm-hmm. sort of like the atmosphere around it and mm-hmm. what kind of makes it exciting for other people. Um, but yeah, like after high school, I took a couple years off to just sort of like get my mind right. There are some things that I need to work out internally with myself Mm -hmm. before I dedicated myself to school and the money and all that stuff. And then, um, I applied to Ryerson for their broadcasting program. Um, but they weren't offering sports until the fourth year. Mm -hmm. So once I found that out, I was like, eh. Mm, That's a long time. It's a long time. So college sports media came about, and it's funny, I got accepted to Ryerson, but then college sports media sort of, like, popped up in my research, and Mm -hmm. I was just like, you know what? Like, yeah, it was a little bit more money, but I'm going to be doing sports the day I go there and not waiting four years to to actually touch it. So it's funny, because once I've joined college sports media, uh, Ryerson now has a sports sport. Broadcast. Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah, of course. so I mean, yeah, yeah, so that was my path. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for where you guys are right now, you guys have taken in two different paths. Like, Kayla, you up and left, you're just like, bye, Toronto, like, let yeah. me go somewhere else and try to get this thing kick, kick started. But Megan, you stayed around for a while. Um, Kayla, how do you think, like, leaving benefited you? Um, just to focus on me. Uh, I think this journey so far with broadcasting has definitely taught me a lot about myself and my strengths and how far I can push myself mentally and Mm -hmm. I'm sure Megan can tell you like this industry it is trying on your mentality and just sort of your mindset and your confidence like Mm -hmm. it's really like a yes and no industry and it's hard and I think I needed to grow 
and grow some skin, tougher skin, and just sort of, you know, gain better experience. So I left, but I mean, it is really tough to stick it out here because it's so cutthroat, I think, yeah. in the city. So, I mean, the fact that Megan floated in the city is amazing. Yeah. Uh, just for me, I needed to go away for a little bit, just figure it out, and I think that it eventually brought me home to realize like what I wanted to do was here and I wanted I wanted a place here at least you got to come back like yeah I don't think you were gone that long right no I wasn't gone that long I grab when I graduated school I think it was maybe like a year and a half of just being away from home mm -hmm. which some people they spend like three years away and I think that uh, that's awesome for them but I also need to make some decisions that were mentally stability like stable for myself and mm -hmm. I realized that um, being away, I, I could do it, and I was happy doing things. Like I, you know, I'd go to like local hockey teams or yeah. soccer teams and stuff, and I do things. But I knew that I wanted to be in Toronto, and I felt like, you know what? Like, let me just build up my confidence, go back to the city, and if I fail, then I fail. There's, There's nothing, nothing wrong with that, no. right? And I can just go back out or go somewhere else where I can get better. But um, yeah, I just took a chance on coming back to the city a little bit early, and I guess it kind of paid off. There's endless opportunities regardless whether you stay or you go. Yeah, exactly. Um, what about you for Megan? Do you think that it, it really helped you or would you do it all over again? Would you leave? The way I look at it, like, I I couldn't have done what Kayla did. Mm -hmm. um, just because knowing what I wanted to do, the moment I mm -hmm. had that decision made for me for going into radio, within the first year I knew exactly what I wanted for a career. Whereas most people... I don't know, Kayla, you might realize this or you might have realized this at some point. Most people don't do their first year and know exactly what they want to do when they are, when they graduate. I knew exactly that I wanted to do play-by-play -play mm -hmm. when I graduated and was finished. So for me, the best part or the best decision was to stay because the best opportunity to do play-by-play -play would be to stay at home, in the city, be close to where basketball is happening and where basketball was flourishing and that happened to be in the GTA and not just the GTA but Ontario as a whole mm -hmm. I had more opportunities and then also too with with the Canadian League that I was working in there was teams right down the road so it made it that much more easy for me to eventually get a job within it and then also to getting the opportunity at McMaster that like Mac is maybe 12 minutes from my house so yeah. getting to do that for four seasons it made sense to me so if like looking back if I was to make the decision all over again the only reason I would leave is if it was to go to the States. Yeah. If not, I'm staying. Yeah, you're good. But I think when you graduated, you graduated or once you had everything together, you were in a good time. Because that's when the NBL started coming around, right? Yeah. And then Raptors 905 popped up and it yeah, was the, just like, yo, the I'm timing, right here. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> timing for I me, it got lucky. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Timing so, for me was really, really lucky with everything that was happening with not just the Canadian League popping up and then mm -hmm. 905 now popped up, but just... Canadian basketball, basketball. as a yeah. whole yeah. like it was just it was it was just everything was flourishing and was just my timing mm -hmm. was just it I got lucky with timing mm -hmm. and, and I've a lot of people that I've talked to um, they told me to try and lose that line of I've been lucky with mm -hmm. what's happened to me but and I, I've done that but when it comes to the timing of yeah. how things happened yeah. I've got lucky that the timing of me graduating and then opportunities popping up just it worked out for me whereas had I graduated two years earlier or two years later mm -hmm. I might not have had the path that I took. Well, you know, like my homegirl Oprah says, it's like luck is preparation and, and like timing or whatever yeah. like, together. That's all it is, and yeah. you were ready. Yeah, um, exactly. But moving on, being women in a male dominant industry, um, you guys have you guys go into rooms a lot of the times being the only females, full of males. Um, how intimidating is it doing that, especially when you're first starting off? It's not. Oh, excuse no, me. No, I think excuse me. I know. You have to, you have to go in, with, have the to go in with, with the mindset that it's not. And mm -hmm. sometimes you don't need to come off rude, but you need to come off with an attitude like, hey, there's a reason why.